Hi, my name is Jessica. I currently live in Southern New Hampshire and I'm 39 years old. How can I get started on my dreams and make them a reality? Where do I start, Mel? There's so much self-doubt. It's overwhelming. And I just don't know where to begin. Okay. I love this question from Jessica because I can almost hear you nodding. I can feel it. Even though I can't see you, I can feel you going, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. There, how do I get started, Mel? This is the single most common question I get. Once somebody knows what they want to change or why they want to change it, the next big question is how. And so I'm going to answer Jessica's question in two parts because there are two parts to how. The first part is easy. It's the doing part. And how you get started when it comes to taking action and you don't know what to, quote, do, this is easy. Just go to Google. I'm, I'm dead serious about this. Google has the answer to everything. If you simply go to Google or go to YouTube and type in the change you want to make or the goal that you have or the thing that you want to create in your life, you will probably get 6.3 million search results. And every single one of the links that you click on will give you a long list of things that you could probably do. And I'm not being a smart ass here. The fact is, the steps that you need to take action-wise are super simple. The reason why you're stuck is because of the second part of her question. Now, did you notice she said at the very end, my self-doubt, my self-doubt. Because one of the reasons why you get stuck is because of the doubt. And this is where working on your dreams and your goals gets really tricky. Because if your own mindset is working against you, you're actually never going to feel inspired or motivated or encouraged to take the actions that that Google result just told you to take. And so we got to focus on your mindset first and foremost when it comes to where do I start? Because I want to play this out with you. Let's just role play here. If you're sitting there going, I would love to become an opera singer, but I don't know, but self-doubt, but what if I sound stupid, but this, but that, but what if Uncle Willie's... If you start doubting your ability to make that happen, how motivated do you feel? If you're sitting there telling yourself that you can't do it or that it's not going to work. This is the reason why most people never even get started on their goals and dreams. Their thinking pattern is the problem because their self-doubt, their perfectionism, their lack of self-worth, it's convincing you not to take the action. And this is such a common problem that Jessica is not the only one that has actually submitted a question about this. I got a ton of them. And so I want to play another question that was submitted from a woman named Megan so that I can start to show you that you're not the only one whose self-doubt is the problem. My name is Megan and I'm from Tampa, Florida. Long story short, I've always wanted to move out of my hometown. And ever since I graduated college, I've tried to find an excuse to move. I'm in my third job in my career. Love it. But I'm just like, I never pursued that moving out of my hometown. And there's always been this itch. And I'm 32. I'm single. I have no kids. And I'm like, my lease is about to end. So I'm like, is now the time? But all those fears just keep popping in, which are a lot of, you know, limiting beliefs that I have. So my parents always kind of told me, um, you need money to move you. Like if you don't have a bunch of money saved, then you shouldn't be going anywhere. Um, they never moved out of Tampa. So, um, they were like, your, your family's here. Um, why would you want to leave your family? And kind of like guilt tripped me a little bit. Um, so I kind of shut down the conversation and I basically just don't know what to do and I feel stuck, but I feel like I need to do it. 
but I don't have a reason to other than I want to. How do I get past feeling stuck and too afraid? And I feel like I'm just always looking for excuses of why I shouldn't. My biggest fear is just getting there and then being like, why did I do this? I'm alone. I have no family or friends here. Who knows when my family or friends are going to visit me, even if they will, Am I going to, is this going to cost me a lot of money? And now I put myself in like a bad financial situation. What if I lose my job and I'm in a new city? Um, What if I hate it? So Mel, how do I get started? What is the first step I should take? And what is the right way of going about doing this? Oh my God. Yeah. First of all, can we just agree? We love Megan. Don't you just love how honest she is? How she's just laying it all out there. And you know what else I love about her? She is every single one of us. Because once you lock on to something that you, quote, have an itch, and by the way, that's the only reason you need. If you want to do something, if you have a desire to do it, if you have that itch, that pull, that's your reason. You don't need any other justification other than you get to want things. You get to try things. And so I just love her because... In sharing so much about how she's struggling internally, and you can hear that, can't you? You can hear how much she wants to do this. And yet, there is that conflict inside of her. And so I want to unpack this layer by layer for you, because here's the thing. It's very easy for me, on the outside, to put my hands on my hip and to look at Megan with a big smile and say, honey... You are not getting any older. Get your ass out of Tampa and move. What if it all works out? Stop worrying about it. And by the way, Tampa's waiting for you in case you hate it. So you can reverse the decision. But you got to start taking some risks. Like I could tell her this all day long. But what really moves the needle in your life is when you can coach yourself. When you can shut down the conversation inside your own mind. Because the only thing that is holding Megan back from pursuing something she's been thinking about for years is the conversation she's having with herself. And so how do you shut down the conversation? The answer, believe it or not, is manifesting. Wait, what? Mel? Hold on a second. Mel Robbins, did you just say... All I have to do is manifest. If I think about moving, magically it'll happen. No, that's not what I said. You see, you don't understand what manifesting is. Nobody does. I didn't for decades. Manifesting is not just imagining something or wishing or wanting something to happen. Uh, That's what Megan's been doing. She's been thinking about it. She's been wishing it would happen. She's been wanting it to happen. Has that made her move? No. That's not manifesting, everybody. Manifesting is intentionally training your brain and your nervous system to believe in something that hasn't happened yet. That's what manifesting is. Manifesting is a power tool. It's backed by neuroscience. It is backed by years of research. And when used properly... It helps you achieve your goals because it helps you prepare to do the work. I use science-backed manifesting tools every single day to shut down the negative conversations in my life and to live a big life and to take big risks. And dude, Olympic athletes use manifesting. And we're going to get into how Olympic athletes and the world's leading you know, business leaders and successful people everywhere use it. But I'm telling you right now, the way you shut down your internal conversation that is holding you back is manifesting. And I'm not only going to give you the definition of what manifesting is and what it isn't, but I'm going to walk you through four steps backed by neuroscience on how you're going to use manifesting properly as a brain reprogramming tool. That's what we're going to do here today. And I'm also, as I walk you through these steps, you're going to learn the four mistakes that absolutely everybody makes when it comes to the how and when it comes to trying to manifest. 
Jessica, I'm sure, is making this mistake. Megan makes this mistake. I've been making this mistake for years until I understood the science. And so, you know, as I do this, I want to turn the spotlight on you for a second because I'm going to continue talking about Megan and I'm going to learn a lot about manifesting and how to use science to rewire your mind. But what is something that you feel the itch to do, that you've been thinking about, that you're the one shutting down? Here's a way that you could really get honest with yourself. Let's just say that Mel Robbins was going to take a sabbatical from hosting the Mel Robbins podcast. And let's say I was going to move into your house and you and I were going to be surgically joined at the hip for a year. And you were going to have to deal with me being by your side and in your ear day by day. I'd be there as you woke up. I'd be there as you go to sleep. I can sense that itch because I'm connected to your hip. What is it knowing that I would be in your life annoying as hell, pushing you through your fears. What would you take on that you're not taking on right now? What dream would you pursue? If I'm your big O-line, you know, your offensive lineman in football, I'm the one that's going to block and tackle for you. I'm the one that's going to clear the path. I'll handle your freaking parents. I'm going to find the apartment. I'll push you out of your comfort zone. We got this because I'm going to be by your side. What is that thing, that itch, that dream, because I want you to be selfish as you listen to this. And so hold on to that as I describe how manifesting is one of the first things you have to learn how to do to get started on making this a reality. So what is manifesting? Manifesting is mentally training for getting what you want. That's all that it is. It is part of the toolkit that successful people around the world use. Let me tell you what manifesting is not. Manifesting is not thinking thoughts and then hoping they come true. That is what people do on their seventh birthday and they blow out the candles. That is not what we are doing here. Manifesting is based in neuroscience. It is a tool that you are going to use precisely, intentionally, systematically with purpose because you use manifesting to rewire your mind and your body, and your spirit to help you do the work to achieve your dreams. When you use manifesting properly, you are removing the mental obstacles of self-doubt, resistance, fear, perfectionism, feeling overwhelmed, other people's expectations, all that stuff that is holding you in place right now that makes you spin in circles. Manifesting clears that shit out and it programs using science a completely different way of thinking and feeling about the things that you want to create in your life. And when you manifest properly, it's almost like the pregame training that you do before the big game. It prepares you to take action. It boosts your confidence. It gets you ready to do that thing. So you and I are going to walk step by step through how to do this, but I just want you for this moment I want you to embrace the definition that this is not wishing. This is not the law of attraction. This is based in science and neuroscience. This is about reprogramming your mind instead of letting your fears run your life. You, my friend, are the one programming this show. That's right. I have scoured the DMs, the comments, all of your submissions for topics and questions. And wow, this is the single most common question I get. The answer, believe it or not, is manifesting. 